Hey guys, Dark Armor Tutorials here, and I'm going to continue with the series of what I was talking about yesterday. Um, I, the only thing I have done right now is I opened up Photoshop, and if you do not know how to do that, uh, you can refer to my last video, uh, which is linked in the description. So, what I'm going to do today is just go over the tools and how to open up a new file. So, how we do that is you go to File, New, and uh, what this does is you can name your file. So, if I was drawing Luna, <laughs> best princess, um, I would maybe name it, name it blah, Luna Drawing. And now these are presets. And if you have something copied and pasted, it'll, the nice thing about Photoshop is it'll automatically uh, use the dimensions of whatever you have copied. Obviously, if it's a picture. Um, default Photoshop size is 7 by 5 inches. Uh, you have US paper, international. Most of these are like self explanatory. Uh, or you could do custom and you could set your own stuff. Uh, like your own parameters. And you can do this in inches, centimeters, millimeters. Uh, you won't use these three. Not most likely. Like, most likely you will not use these three. Points, picas, and columns. Uh, pixels you may, and as you see that it automatically converts it, so 7 inches is 504 pixels. So depending on whether or not, like for this video, if I wanted to do screen resolution, uh, my screen is 1920 by 1280. So this is my screen. Um, I'm just going to keep this here for right now. And so, let's go over the tools. So over here, like last time, this is our toolbar. May look like that. May look like this. If you have any whoops, further questions about where this is located, uh, again, refer to my last video. And what we're going to go over is uh, just what each uh, bar, what each tool does. And I'm just gonna scribble a little bit just to um, show what each thing does. Alright, so with these scribbles, uh, let's begin. So this first tool is the movement tool, and depending on what layer you have, uh, layers will be the next video, it will move that layer around. Only that layer. Um, it also, you can shortcut key this by hitting control, uh, and then this, and then clicking around. Oops, sorry, that was the background layer. And then clicking, and then you'll move it around. Next, you have the marquee. And a marquee is a fancy way of selecting something. Um, so, like, if I wanted to only edit this, inside this box, I'd draw a marquee. If you hit delete, it only deletes what's inside that box. Alright, I'm actually going to trash that layer. And this also applies to... If I want to draw, it stops at this layer. I mean, at the dotted ants, you can't draw outside there. Alright. If you want to change the shape of this marquee into, like, elliptical, you can uh, right-click and switch elliptical marquee. If you want it to be a perfect circle or square, hold shift while you make it. See? Holding shift, it makes it a perfect circle. Not a perfect circle, perfect circle. Not perfect, not perfect. There you go. Alright. Continuing on with uh, selection tools, we're going to go in with the lasso tool, which is another way of making a selection, and this you draw. You basically just draw your selection, and then you connect it back, and then you can move only this or whatever you select. Uh, the mag the polygonal uh, selection tool is basically the same thing except this one you don't draw you just click this is good for selecting like hard shapes uh, or large areas the last um, lasso tool is the magnetic lasso tool and this attempts to move to what you're trying to trace uh, it's not always perfect 
So I'm like gonna do like half of it. So as you can see, it's trying to like outline the black. Uh, yeah. All right. So now I'll make that selection. Next, you have the magic wand tool, and this automatic. This is probably a uh, second most important tool because it can select things based on color, um, and that's based up on tolerance up here, depending on the ranges of color that you are allowing. So I'm just gonna fill, do a gradient fill real fast. Alright. Ooh, that's ugly. Hold up. And I'm red green colorblind, so go figure. There we go. I wanna do a linear one. Alright, so now if I hit W, which is the shortcut key, you can select the colors. The higher my tolerance, 25, the larger my selections will be because it can, um, it will choose more variations of whatever, whatever color I'm clicking. Alright? This is also goes along with the quick selection tool, which basically tries to do the same thing. Um, you draw and it'll try to select, it's like the magnetic lasso, but it's you don't draw around it, you draw in it. As you can see, it just jumped from only having these two things selected to having everything selected, so it's very touchy. This is your crop tool. Slice, you should not use. Uh, it, that's if you right-click the crop tool, you'll get a slice and a slice select tool. Uh, you should not use those. Those are for like web developing and uh, whatnot, so you really shouldn't have to slice things. Uh, cropping, obviously, it makes your entire image smaller. So I literally cropped the page there. So this is my new image. Uh, you got to be really careful with that. Your eyedropper tool. Um, basically, it takes whatever color you click on. So if I want to paint in blue, I click, and it gives me blue. T it shows you the color of uh, what you're going to pick. So if I want yellow, I got yellow, and now I draw in yellow. If I want this color, I'll draw on this color. This is like, for painters, this is an essential. Um, you hold Alt with the brush tool to shortcut to it. So that way I can switch colors super quickly. Alright. Uh, next tool is the Spot Healing Brush, or uh, Patch Tool, Healing Brush, Red Eye Tool. These are used mainly for photos. Um, so you won't really need these for drawing ponies. Brush Tool. Alright. I think I might even have an entire thing just for the brush tool. So, this, long story short, this brush, this tool is for drawing. The pencil tool is only for hard sketches, so I always recommend using the brush because you can accomplish everything that you can with the pencil with the brush, except more. The clone stamp lets you clone things, so if you pick a source by holding Alt and click it, it will clone whatever I have there. Alright, so that's pretty useful. You will not use the history brush tool. It's not very important. Eraser tool is important, but you just have to be careful because it erases, obviously. So, especially on like background layers, there's no getting what I just erased back, except control z which is undo. You can also do this through edit, step backward. Um, however, if you do that too much, you won't be able to control z all the way. So, gotta be very careful with that. The paint bucket tool is self is pretty self-explanatory. If you have a circle and I want to paint it, you just go to your paint bucket tool and click inside it. And that was a bad place to. Well, no, it's not. Alright, and now I have that circle filled with whatever foreground color I have. The smudge tool smudges obviously. Uh, it's kind of, depending on the settings you have, it can be really helpful or not at all. Uh, naturally, the smudge tool really isn't that helpful. I can give you guys some settings that helps it, like, kind of blend in with the environment around it, but as normal settings, it's not very helpful whatsoever. Um, next tool, oh yeah, this also is Blur and Sharpen. Again, this is more for photos.
this is your sponge burn and dodge tool. Dodge lightens, makes things brighter. Burn darkens. It's really tiny again, mostly because it is Photoshop it is meant for like photos. So uh, the sponge tool doesn't really do anything. The pen tool is an advanced tool, and I will have an entire tutorial or another video specifically for the pen tool because it is probably it is no it is definitely the most important tool for drawing ponies. Uh, so I will do a quick demonstration of that you can click and then from here you can fill like that. Or if you wanted to do the outline of a pony, you go to stroke path. And then it does that. This is very complicated, especially for gang users, so like I said, another video will, will be done. Text tool, pretty self explanatory. You click, you type. Your color is up here. Alright. This is your path selection tool. Again, this goes with the pen. So if I had multiple paths, I can select them. Like this. Alright. This is the shape tool. Uh, you can choose from rectangle, round rectangle, ellipse, or polygon lines. I mean, you can do that. And this is the uh, custom shape, and you can get a whole bunch of random shapes up here. Alright, so these deal with 3D, so you won't really need them. This is the hand tool. It moves around, so like if I was really zoomed in. Oops. Really zoomed in. And I can move around to work. Alright. And then last but not least is the uh, zoom tool. And you zoom out by holding Alt and clicking. And you zoom in by simply clicking. Alright. Uh, those are all the tools. I will also mention that the that these are your colors, your background color and your foreground color. This upper color is what you draw with. It's known as your foreground color. Uh, so you can use specific colors. Another coloring tutorial will I will add one on later. Uh, so, but besides that, you should just know for right now that this is like in general what your color like how you choose colors. All right, so just for basics, if you just want to get started before my next tutorial, go for it. All right, um, those are all the tools. Uh, like I said, more tutorials are coming up. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, give me your feedback, because I'd love to know what you guys are thinking. All right, thanks, guys. See you later.